So a couple of months ago, I released this video about creating a procedural eyelid setup using geometry nodes in Blender. And someone asked a really good question in the comments about whether or not it's possible to add eyelashes to this setup. I thought this would be actually worth doing a follow-up video to show that yes, that is possible and to give a couple of ideas about how you might go about approaching that. So thank you, Julian Nam 3594 for your excellent question and let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the example file which is available in the description of this video and we will just pick up where we left off in part one. So let's go to a geometry nodes workspace and this was our setup as we left it with the eyelid. Let's just open this up a little bit using the attributes in the modifier. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is actually a slight modification to this setup because I noticed that something wasn't working quite as expected. Because we are driving these wrinkles and then performing an extrude on the mesh to give the, the eyelid its thickness, these wrinkles are actually distorting the normals, which means that our extrusion is happening after the wrinkles and is therefore not always extruding in on a true normal towards the center of our sphere. So all we're gonna do is cut these connections either side of the wrinkle setup. We're gonna move this whole chunk of the graph further down and reinsert it in here. So now we've got our extrusion happening before we deform the mesh with the wrinkles. And that should mean that our thickness happens towards the center of our eyeball. We're actually gonna build the eyelash in a separate modifier to keep things nice and clean. Collapse this one down and add a new geometry nodes modifier. We're gonna put it before the subdivision, create a new graph and just give this one a name, geometry nodes lashes. So our approach is gonna to be to delete everything apart from a row of edges that run along the eyelid. And then we can use that to create a curve that we can instance our lashes along. So let's drop down a delete geometry node. And um, we wanna be deleting faces. If we go back briefly to this modifier, when we did our extrusion here, we stored a named attribute and called it rim to help us identify the faces that provide the thickness. So we can actually use that in our lashes setup. We do a named attribute node. We want everything that is not rim. So if we do a, a not Boolean math node here, plug this into our selection. So we've deleted the faces we don't want, but what we need to do is separate this into upper and lower lids. So we're gonna to need to add another condition to this Boolean. And if we go back into our initial graph for a moment again, we have an attribute way back near the beginning called rotation multiplier. And we can use this to identify which is the top lid and which is the bottom lid. But back to our lashes. So let's drop down an and Boolean math node because we wanna add another condition in here. We're gonna grab another named attribute and we'll identify our rope molt like that. And this time we wanna check whether or not something is equal to zero. And in fact, I don't think it's an and we want here, it's an or we want either one of those conditions to be true. And if we plug that in, you can see that's getting rid of our bottom lid. If we change this to not equal, we'll get the, the top lid deleted and we're just left with the bottom lid. This will be easy enough to link up to a switch on the modifier so that we can pick which, whether it's the top or the bottom lid that we're using to create our lashes. So now we're left with this single row of faces and we want to delete points this time on the inside so that we're just left with these edges on the outside. So we're gonna do another delete geometry. This time we wanna delete points. I'm just gonna mute it for a second so that we can still see our geometry. If we mute this one as well for a second, basically we want to delete these ones here on the inside rim. And what's unique about these points here is that they're only connected to one face. Everything else is connected to more than one face, but these ones on the inside, they don't have faces on the other, the other side of them. So we can capture that attribute before we delete any geometry. I'm going to capture an attribute on the point domain. We want to know whether the edge neighbors face count is equal to one. And if that is the case, we're going to delete the points here. So let's bring back our first deletion and we're left with our row of faces again. Let's unmute this one and plug the result of this captured attribute into here. And we should now be left with one single row of edges that describes our upper lid. Okay, so we wanna turn this row of edges into a curve. We'll drop down our mesh to curve node. And we want to make sure the normals are set on this curve correctly so that when we instance along it, things are pointing in the right direction. So we're also going to set a curve normal. We want to set it to free. And we're going to use the position of the points to define the normal of the curve. So 
taken from the center of our sphere, the position that you have to follow, the vector that you have to follow, is going to just carry on out from the curve as it's normal. So we just drop down a position node, plug that into here. Now, we probably want to not have these lashes go all the way right into the corners, so we're going to add a trim curve node after this. And let's just set this to maybe 0 0.5 and 0.95. And then we can resample the curve, and this will allow us to specify how many lash instances we have. Let's start with something like 25. We're going to do an instance on points. We'll use a quadratic Bezier for this example. Let's plug that in. We're going to set the start to 0, 0, 0, the middle to 0, 0, 0 as well for now. And the end will define how long our lash is going to be. So let's get them pointed in the right direction. Align rotation to vector. The vector is again going to be position. And we want the Z axis to be aligned. And actually the reason these look a bit weird is because in the end I didn't mean to put this one meter value into the X component. I wanted it to point straight up in Z. So we set this to zero and go one in Z. And now we get lashes that point out. They follow along nicely wherever the lid goes. Uh, we can specify the number. And let's just work with this quadratic bezier for a second just to give these a little bit more shape. We can actually start to add some values in here to give us that nice upwards curve along the lashes. And what else is nice is sometimes you don't want these ones at the edge to be sticking out horizontal. You want things to tend towards facing forward. And an easy way to do that is if we take this position, run it through a mix node, and as the B input for the mix node, we're going to take the position and just multiply it by zero on the x-axis and one and one on the on the y and the z. And what that does is it, it disregards how far out to the side these guys are. And by mixing that between zero and one, we can dial in an amount of forward facing like that. Okay. Let's look at scaling these instances a little bit so that they are shorter as we get towards the corners. So if we take a spline parameter node, we're going to run the factor through a float curve. This will allow us to shape the scale of our lashes. You can see now they're still full scale where our spline parameter is 1. And as we go back towards 0, the start of the spline coming down towards 0 on scale. So let's just Pull this one down so they're all at zero, and then we want the longest ones to be around the middle of our spline, something like this. And then on top of that value, we could also just multiply this by a float so that we can actually globally scale all the lashes. And we're going to want to bring our original geometry back. So if we put down a group input and then just join the instance with our original geometry, I'm going to hold down Control Shift and right click drag from one to the other and that creates a join geometry node provided we have the node wrangler add-on enabled and there we go we've now got our lashes following along nicely with our our lid whatever shape we choose to make to apply some thickness to these curves form our lashes we're going to realize these instances then we can set curve radius and we can do a curve to mesh node with a circle as our profile curve we don't need 32, 8 is plenty. If we run a spline parameter node through a map range, plug this into our radius, we should now be able to set our curves to taper as they go along the length of the lash. We start with something like 0 0.05 and end with 0. It's probably still a little bit thick at the base. Now let's set a material here as well while we're at it. I'm going to use the same material as I'm using on the pupil for now just so that things are easy to see. Those lashes are sticking nicely onto our inside of our lid. So I wanted to go over one alternative setup. If we don't want to use individual hairs, if you like, or curves to form our lash, we might want to just extrude out more of a, a solid profile, which is a little bit more of a cartoony approach I guess to, to forming the lashes. So we're going to temporarily disconnect these lashes from the join geometry and we'll come back to here where we resample our curve. Curve to mesh and we're going to do an extrude 
we want to be extruding edges and if we put this into our join geometry now we should be able to see that's coming out nicely from our curve let's have a look at how we can shape this similarly to how we did the instances before if we drop down a capture attribute we want to capture the spline parameter the factor into here we can put this through a float curve and then use this to drive how how much we extrude. If we take this mixed position, we're going to run the result of that through a normalize to make sure it's always of length one. And then we run this vector through a scale operation. Now the result of our float curve will drive the scale of that vector. And we can push that vector into our extrusion offset. So again, let's pull this down at this end. We probably don't want to go all the way to zero this time, so I'm going to just lift the ends up a little bit and then add another point in the middle as before. And then we can use our offset scale to globally manipulate how far out we come. And this doesn't have to be symmetrical. If you're doing obviously a left eye and a right eye, you might you might want to have a bigger extrusion out on the outer side than on the inner. So a shape something like this might be more what you're after. So let's duplicate our set material node up onto this noodle here. And that gives us a second option for, for our lashes. So we've got the solid version like this, like a plane, an extruded plane, or we can take our instance curves like that. So I hope that was useful. Um, thanks again for the great question, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.